Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the recap of the Xbox One's E3 event. It was absolutely insane. We saw tons of new exclusive titles, a lot of new information on Xbox Gold, as well as the price for the Xbox One, which is actually going to be $499 US, $499 EU, and then uh, Euro, and then £429 pounds for UK. So very interesting for that. We saw a ton of gameplay, though, so that's what I'm going to be showcasing you guys, telling you everything about it. We have a ton of information to get through, so what I actually did was put Anna as well as links in the description to below if it's not available yet it will be shortly to the full gameplay for each of these games it started out with opening of Metal Gear Solid 5 some awesome graphics that they showcased before they even started talking so that was uh, Metal Gear 5 after that they told us a little bit about Xbox Live which can now be shared in your family it can have multiple people on it two free games per month as well they're really doing a lot more with Xbox and we're also going to be seeing early Battlefield 4 content on the Xbox as well besides what we can assume is Call of Duty as well gets stuff early because of the fact that Xbox you actually have to pay for a membership you get a lot of bonuses and they're not finishing their support for the Xbox 360 quite yet this is something that they want to keep going throughout so we actually saw some new games that are going to be coming out for the Xbox 360 one of those being this tank game World of Tanks. It's pretty interesting. This is actually going to be a 15 versus 15 game online, and it's coming free to the Xbox 360 exclusively. So that's pretty awesome. Another game that they're going to be rolling out, which uh, seemed pretty interesting. It seemed kind of more like a kid game, but it had so sort of a Mario type feel. Is this game? It's Max something. <laughs> it's uh, pretty interesting though. It's kind of more like a side view kind of Mario style feel to it puzzle more type game anyways moving away from the Xbox 360 and the gold membership we then moved over to the Xbox one new games this one rise the first one we took a look at and it actually went back to take a further look at it with some of the Google Glass features uh, being that your iOS device possibly and then you know obviously your Windows device that uses Google Glass Anyways, this game looks really interesting because you're fighting as a Roman soldier back in the Roman periods. Swords, arrows, catapults. Looks really awesome. Xbox. All of these Xbox exclusive games. So after this, they brought up a, a new Maserati, which was pretty awesome. They said there was only two in the world. I don't know the most about cars, but this game looks freaking sick. That's right, Forza 5. This one, they actually decided to make it much more realistic in the sense of people driving. So what it actually does is when you play, I believe online, Online, or it's always online I'm not hundred percent sure about that they didn't clarify but the other cars that you're racing against are actually other players and if you're not playing or if you're not playing against the actual other player <laughs> the game actually remembers how you play and it lets you drive against other people so when you're not even there the car will be driving for you in other races and you get points from that while your car is racing based off of your play style so there's some more information on that as well as the new trailer that they came out with you could check that out pretty freaking sweet the next one this is actually uh, Sunset Overdrive something along those lines and it's kind of similar to um, Mirror's Edge that's what it felt like at the beginning you didn't actually see any real gameplay but as you can see he's doing some hardcore parkour son and uh, flying across the screen but there's another twist because as you can see he grabs a shotgun and there's like some zombies chasing after him so this is a pretty interesting title as well I think this could be pretty sweet um, you know, it's got the obvious feel from Mirror's Edge, which is actually kind of short parkour game on the Xbox 360, but it also has two games kind of incorporated in it. Possibly, I don't know. We'll have to see when we get some more information, but the graphics are also kind of a more old school kind of graphics. And as you can see, there's two names there, possibly an online game. Next up, we got a further look at Quantum Break. Now, we got a kind of introduction to this in the original Xbox One event, and this was, a you know, some more in depth into it kind of I guess more storyline or how the game is actually gonna work as you can see he has control of time in some dimension I don't know the most about Quantum Break uh, but it does look like an interesting game from what we know so far next they showed this really quick preview of this game D4 which I really didn't even understand they didn't really talk about much but this is some of the gameplay from it uh, yeah, that's pretty much all there is for it, though. Next. Oh, my goodness, ladies and gentlemen. This game is called Spark. At first, I didn't really understand. He was actually using the Kinect voice to say Woodlands, Redlands, 
evening, daytime. You could say whatever you want and completely control it. It's the next step of Minecraft, in my opinion. You can create your own enemies. So in this case, he decided, said goblins. And uh, then later on, he actually was playing with another player there. And on top of that, this is actually free world. So after you create a world, or if somebody else creates a world, you can interact with that. Take their world, expand on it, change it. You can create mountains. You can create anything you want on this in any type of environment, desert, whatever, create moats. And as you can see, he created a rock, upgraded it with a mind, made it a pet, and then upgraded it to a freaking mech that he was able to get in and control fighting, uh, you know, enemies that he created also that were coming after his base that he made. So a very interesting game. You're really going to have to look more into this one. I think it's going to be huge and possibly the next Minecraft. After that, they took a little break from the games, which we'll go back into in a second, and they looked at Google Glass, which you could actually use to find timeline while playing Rise, as well as leaderboards, see how your friends are doing, where they are at, compared to you, and while he was playing it, he actually got a notification while he was queued for this game, and instantly switched over by saying, Xbox, go whatever he said, I don't even remember, but after that, we also got to look at uploads. Your Xbox is a DVR at the same time, so while you're playing your game, you can actually go back to that previous game, this was the game that they just played, record it, and then upload it with a few different things, as well as put your voice over it with the Kinect. Not too sure how this is going to be, or how effective it's going to be, but we'll see, and yes, they also have Twitch directly incorporated with the Xbox One, so you can just straight go to Twitch, straight live stream, directly there. We also got some more information on your friends list, which they said it goes from 100 of your friends to all of your friends, so not too sure how much that's exactly going to be. They're also going to be switching from Microsoft points to actual currency, so it's not going to be a hassle with that anymore, which is really great because the Microsoft points were too much of a hassle. You always had extra ones lying around. They also gave a little bit more information about Xbox Live Gold, which I might have mentioned before. They said that you can actually have gold sharing, so I'm not sure how that's going to be exactly. They mentioned it's going to be within your family so we'll see how that is when we get more details. Next, they showed us a little bit of this game, Crimson Dragon, which looked pretty interesting. You played it as a dragon, flew around, uh, attacked stuff, you had some abilities, but they didn't even have the audio for it. It glitched out a little bit, as well as with the Battlefield 4. Glitched out a little bit, which I'll talk about more in a second, but that was pretty much it for Crimson Skies. After that, they showed us some Dead Rising 3 gameplay, which really looked epic. They said it's completely open world, and actually a few interesting things, as you see he's doing right there. He took two weapons and combined them. He also did that with a pistol and a flashlight, in this case, it's a sledgehammer and like a chainsaw and uh, it, you just have a ton of free roaming abilities there's no loading times it's just 100% open world moves around tons of zombies and huge throw right cut them in half you can also drive vehicles to help you get around which is pretty epic and then the final thing that he showed us was he actually incorporated the google glass into this game by having an actual he called it an airstrike to finish off the actual thing you'll see it in a second but he used his google glass to call in an airstrike right here and uh help him get to the center of the city which is what he was trying to do at the time but it looks like a really huge open world interesting game uh and i know a lot of people are fan of zombies games so this is going to be a huge one Next up, Witcher 3. This is more of an RPG style, huge game. They said also open world. This is a direction many of these games are taking nowadays, especially because of the upgraded hardware that they have to work with. But in this case, they also said that it'll be able to work with your Kinect voice. So you can just say the spell while you're playing the game. Kind of interesting, we'll see how it actually works, but moving on, Battlefield 4, ladies and gentlemen. They had a problem with this, actually, he was standing there for about 30 seconds because the video wasn't playing, but once it did, the, the graphics were insane. Take a look at this. This is kind of what Battlefield is known for. One quick moment I noticed there, he shot the uh, jet down and it actually came crushing down. They're also known for their destructible environment, so hopefully this really factors into the multiplayer as well, which is what I'm really excited about. Not so much for the single player of this one, but... They do showcase some really good graphics as well as the water incorporation, how that moves. That would be really cool if they incorporated that better with multiplayer as well. But, like I said, we'll just have to wait and see. Great graphics, great gameplay so far though. And also something interesting, Battlefield 4 is going to be getting its content early on the, the DLC, early on the Xbox One, which originally, or last time, was not uh, available. They only had that for Call of Duty, so now it's also with Battlefield. This is another huge factor that Xbox gets over the... Uh, uh, PlayStation because of the fact that they get it early. Um, 
and that's partly because that obviously you pay for Xbox Live. There's more perks that come with that. Next up, this this random game below, which really didn't look very interesting, but I don't even I didn't understand it, but I thought I'll put it in there just in case you guys might have been interested in it or something. I don't know. Anyways, next they had an announcement that they're going to be creating brand new AAA title, which is another Call of Duty, another Battlefield 3, and this is coming from a new studio that has a lot of funding, as you could see from all the background. They said this was from their in-game engine, and I mean, the graphics look insane. We don't see any real actual gameplay, but it does look really cool, and uh, it could be something epic. It's another aspect with guns, though. I'm kind of frustrated with that. I would have liked to see something like Destiny, which we also have coming out they didn't mention, but that was from Black Tusk studio so interesting we'll see more on that in the future like i said that's going to be a new triple a title type style thing next up halo this has been with me for i don't know since the xbox one man when halo one came out and now they're coming out with halo 5 originally when they were showing this you didn't really understand what's happening this guy cloaked standing in the desert this huge thing coming out of the ground with amazing graphics all around and uh, then the wind blows his hood back everybody started cheering you could actually hear it a little bit in the live stream so that was kind of cool but everybody's so excited for halo this has been such a huge game they're originally going to end it with like halo 3 or something but they're keeping it going so glad to see that it's going to be making for an awesome game on the xbox one finally they wrapped it up with a new game titan fall this actually looks pretty interesting it's kind of more like a mech futuristic shoot shooter kind of has a similarity to halo 4 but you also have a few jetpacks it looks like you can move around a lot more fluidly and like i said there's it, i think it has a much stronger focus on mech action we saw some single player gameplay footage also which will be annotated obviously a few of these like i said are annotated that wraps it up for all of the E3 coverage on the Xbox One, though, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Stone Mountain 64 Be sure to subscribe if you're new and like the video if you did enjoy. This took me a long time to edit everything together and uh, compile all my notes. So once again, don't forget to subscribe, like the video, check out some of my other stuff. This is Stone Mountain 64 signing out. See you guys next video.